So I thought we uh, were really, really good defensively in the first half. Um, I think that's the team we're trying to become. Um, we have um, been pretty good defensively for, for most of our exhibition and most of our uh, our scrimmage and even through the first half tonight. And um, a game that we literally played tonight like we practiced. And that's not to take anything away from Nichols. Uh, <clears throat> our first scout with Lewis was precise, very matter of fact to the point. Uh, some of the things we're doing now, especially on the defensive end, You've got to be very, very dialed in with your coverages, uh, your communication. Um, we, literally on Monday, didn't get any of them right. Didn't, I mean, just uh, Tuesday wasn't, uh, wasn't much better. And uh, yet we fought through it today, and I thought the first half was pretty good. Uh, Trent handled the last play correctly, uh, trying to down a ball screen, we knew what play they were going to run uh, with the double stagger. He fought him over the top of it so he didn't get screened, which means, means our two bigs didn't have to switch or support. They did a great job of walling him up. But uh, uh, So that was that was disappointing, and, and uh, yet I thought there were some positives. Uh, our, our first half DER uh, was .56, which is as low as we've ever had uh, any team here. Um, and, uh, and yet, you can't allow a team to go on a 16-0 run with five minutes to go. And, uh, you know, I was, dis I was really disappointed. I'm really disappointed we didn't get on the floor for loose balls. Uh, got completely outplayed, and Nichols deserves all the credit for that. And then, uh, you know, to not have enough recognition to let and to understand that the McClanahan kid uh, could really score, could really get going, and, and we just kept backing up and let him shoot it. And uh, again, give Nichols a lot of credit and, and uh, our execution on both ends has to be better. Brad, I know it's just one game, but you've seen two with him now. How's Georgie dealing with the change of, I guess, role on this team and, and trying to fit in and find his place? I mean, it's, it's, it's a process, you know, I think that uh, he played 35 minutes. You know, he's, he's a guy that uh, you know, I think the, the thing that uh, we've got to get out of him is the turnovers. Uh, and, uh, you know, there's, there's, uh, there should be collisions at the rim. I mean, there should be freight trains at the rim on rebounds, on contest, on block shots with he and Kofi in there. And, you know, at times we, did, we had some of those things. Um, you know, I think Georgie's, you know, I think everybody saw tonight he can make a three. Uh, he's practiced them, um, and, and they happen to be big shots. Uh, but, um, you know, if I'm disappointed with Georgie in anything, it's just quite simply the, uh, uh, the turnovers. Uh, I'm piggybacking on those turnovers, 23 of the team. They play kind of a up the line, on the line style of mirror image of you guys. You, you go against that, you're used to that in practice. To what do you attribute the sloppiness tonight? Well, if you notice, we're not doing that as much. Yeah. Um, you know, but it, it's hard. It's hard. It's really hard to prepare for it. And it's, again, it's one of the things that we had the challenge with this week in practice. Um, you know, I, I, I've said this to our team. I, I wasn't a very good player, but, I, you know, I don't know if I ever had guys just take my ball. And, and we've got to do a much better job with ball toughness. And I mean, we, we got taken off the dribble, taken out of our hands. Um, and that's a mental approach to the way you have to play. And, and uh, uh, you know, I was way too good a player to have five turnovers against anybody or against any kind of pressure. And Georgie can't have uh, way too good a player to have, you know, four turnovers. And, and, and those are the things that uh, I, you know, I can't live with. You know, I can live with missing shots. We don't, not always going to make shots. Trent's been on a burner for, uh, since the first day, he had, he had an off night. Uh, I can live with that. Uh, he also took three charges uh, and made the defensive play of the night. So I can live with that. It's the simply the, the silly turnovers and the, and the not diving on the floor. I, it will keep me up tonight.
Trent. You kind of men just mentioned it, but on a night where the ball's just not going in for Trent, for him to be able to find other ways to help you guys win on the other end of the floor, you know, his, his resiliency, is that kind of what you're looking for on, on a night where it's just not going in? Well, his defensive grade out after the, the, the Lewis exhibition was 0, 0.0. He, he didn't give up a basket. I mean, he made every right rotation, didn't give up anything. Uh, a lot of you have been sitting in this room, and we've been in here after after that young guy's missed some free throws at crucial times. Uh, try going over and stand up there with the game on the line and have to make two. And uh, that's what veterans do. And, and you know, his confidence is, is extremely high. And, you know, for, for him, it'll be next game, and we'll bounce back. And, you know, he might have one of those, uh, you know, unique nights again. <coughs> Isaac, right in the game last year, you guys didn't play well, and, and then you went to overtime and Port Atlantic took advantage of that. What did you learn, though, about your team even after a five-minute tough stretch to bounce back and get it together? Winners win and losers lose. Winners win. Real simple. Real simple. Winners win. Winners find a way. And uh, Trent, Trent happened to make that play tonight, and then, uh, you know, and then defensively in the, in the overtime, we held them to one of six. We re-engaged. We handled our assignments. Our responsibilities. Uh, Kofi came back and started protecting the rim, and and um, you know we, we did what we had to do in the overtime. But uh, uh, you know there's there's a seven, eight, nine minute stretch where, where we didn't do any of that. I or I'm sorry, Gary. <laughs> to to start overtime, um, um, Andre scored your guys the first seven points. Just how do you see him just take over uh, overtime to? Just put that on the lead for you. Like we've all seen that before. You know, he, he does that. He's got a great knack of getting into the paint. He's strong. Um, you know, I was, I was, uh, it was very unique for him. Right at the end of the first half, he let just a, a, a ball screen, a hard hedge, and a blitz. You know, he kind of forced him to the sidelines, and he never makes those plays. And, uh, you know, late in the game, he, it's what he does. He gets the ball in the paint. He makes the right read. Iowa did made some nice reads. Kofi wasn't ready for for a nice little drop down pass um, as well. And and yet, uh, you know, Dre's going to be an 80, 85, 90 percent free throw shooter. And you want the ball in his hands when he's when he's can make free throws. Shannon, you you used the word disappointment on certain aspects of this game. The players seem to have a um, we're not going to panic about this um, attitude and. Io said, um, "You know, why would I be disappointed? We won. W how do you want them to digest this? Maybe, you know, maybe that's just the public face they want to put on. What did you see afterward, and how do you want them to kind of take this game? Just like that. That's my job. Is to. Is, I, I'm ecstatic we won the game. Don't get me wrong. I, I think that uh, um, uh, I always look for the perfect game. I know it's never going to exist." And I thought we got outplayed tonight, and 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 that is something that that. Uh, uh, I challenge myself with as a, as a coach every single day is to never let our team get out hustled or outplayed. And, and uh, uh, when we're not mentally tuned in, uh, that's 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 completely on me. I'm ecstatic we won the game, and we will be better. Uh, you know, in the, in the in the next one, I can promise you. You um, just said mentally uh, tuned in. Is that? A is that what just wasn't happening when Nickel State went on that 16-0 run? Just guys weren't mentally tuned in at the moment. Well, there takes there takes a, a responsibility to uh, to engage um, in terms of what your assignments are and, and communication. Uh, you know, it's a it's a very easy tell. There's a there's a saying that a lot of NBA teams use, and that's quiet teams never lose. And and we we say that every day. And when you see us chattering and moving and uh, it creates an energy, and, it, and it's it's because everybody knows what we're doing. And we got in that second half, and we thought, oh, yeah, we're up 16, 17, 18, whatever it was, and and this is over, and, and, and we just shut down quick. And that's that's not who we are. That's not who we're going to be either. Jerry, those their defensive styles that take away what you want to do offensively, but do you see something lacking with getting into your offense or moving the ball or flow or anything like that? Yeah, a lot of it. I mean, there's there's been very little. Um, you know, I thought uh, uh, I was really upbeat after the South Carolina scrimmage because, you know, it's one of the reasons I wanted to scrimmage them is because they play that way. And, uh, you know, it was it was real good. And we, we clicked. We were 
we were flowing, we were moving, we were passing, cutting, we were creating opportunities. Uh, then we've seen two teams that are quite a bit smaller, uh, a little more athletic in terms of, of just jet quickness, and um, it's bothered us. And even though we did turn it over against South Carolina, I thought that you know we, we executed and, and uh, you know in look in the Lewis game we executed uh, in the second half. The first half we just rushed everything, and uh, you know we've got we've got to get better. We've we've just we've got to continue to work on that, and that's a uh, it's a challenge for us tomorrow morning. Um, you got a big weekend coming up, obviously. Um, is this a trash can game from a scheme perspective, or a thing? What's the one thing you're going to be looking at film the team tomorrow on the plane or whatever, and, and focusing on? Well, I mean, two things. Two things. I mean, we're going to show them all the good stuff that we did. I mean, that we because the first half was really, really good, and I think we were up 20 on the glass. Uh, I cannot tell you how happy I am with the free throw numbers um, compared to what they've been in the past. Um, in terms of attempts and keeping them off the line, uh, but again, it's it's we've got to clean up our execution on the offensive end. We've got to and, and we'll, we'll we'll show them uh, a lot of that, and then uh, got a feeling we'll show them the last five minutes of the game. Okay. Benjamin Bosa for dunk gets in the game again for six minutes today. I saw Ben at one point it looked like Georgie pushed him to the right spot on the floor. Just how much further does he have to go in getting used to things here, and, and what is he doing that makes you comfortable putting him on the floor right now? Well, I think you, you, you see that. That's leadership from Georgie. And I, you know, again, he doesn't have the reps in practice. When you do a certain defensive drill and you do it for, for 20 minutes in a segment every single day, Ben's missed out on that. And, uh, uh, you know, so it, it's, for Ben, it's, it's keeping the game simple. And, and uh, uh, you know, it'll probably be for a little bit, it'll probably be shorter stents, um, you know, so that, he, so that he is comfortable with what's going on and he doesn't get fatigued. He's still playing himself back into, into you know, what we call basketball shape. So, uh, yeah, I've got, but I've got no problem with Ben, but he's going he's gonna to have to help us this weekend. Coach, good game from Alan Griffin tonight, seven points, five rebounds. Talk a little bit about that and, and maybe a little bit about his uh, pro progress from last season to this season. Should have played him more. Um, you know, I, I think the one thing that, that, that Alan's done is he's really learned to define what his role is. And, he, and he's, last year he tried to do way too much. Uh, every time he caught it, uh, now he's settled in and he's an elite jump shooter. Uh, he's an elite offensive rebounder. Uh, I was really disappointed in him in the Lewis uh, scrimmage, but man, he was so positive and he was incredible. And I, the one thing Allen was tonight, man, he was our cheerleader on the bench uh, and, and Mr. Positive. And, and uh, you know, he's matured physically and he's matured, uh, you know, as a young guy a great deal. And that's, uh, that's been all very helpful. Kepper and DeMonte at 32 minutes combined and no or just two points combined. How do you get more out of those guys? How important will those guys be this weekend to kind of keep you in those games? Yeah, it was, they're, they're going to be vital. Um, you know, and again, I think it was, it was, we were in a good place. Um, and, um, you know, I've, I've got to, I've got to continually challenge Kipper. We need Kipper on the glass, helping us rebound. And, uh, uh, you know, I, I we'll keep working. We'll keep working. Demonte, I don't worry about. Demonte's a guy that, uh, uh, again, we've got to have him rebound the basketball and, and play with an aggression uh, on the offensive end. Uh, he does it defensively, but but we need that aggression offensively. Anything else for coach? All right. Thank you. Thank you.